he was able to really drive a song um, and beat the shit out of his drum set, but still include those, those little subtle drags and the high and the way he moved his hi hat when he was bashing on his ride and things like that that you don't really hear but you feel when you're listening to the track. You know, it's like it, it's a nice thing. It just adds a, a, an element of almost disco to the punk rock aspect of it. You know, right, right, I see. Okay. And he did a lot of like, and I was a big fan of Tony Thompson and, and, uh, and it was like it was chic and, you know, Tony played with what Robert Palmer, um, yeah. and, oh, yeah. and uh, did great things on the, uh, great things on the Bowie stuff, uh, let's dance and all that. Mm-hmm. And he just had that black, 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 that, that kind of, <laughs> you know, and Dave did that a lot on, on those records. And I really liked that. It was almost, you know, there was a there was a funk to his punk rock, you know, right. which I appreciated. I it reminded me of Greg Erico, the drummer for Sly and the Family Stone, where he just went, you know, but it it's just the way he did it, the tension he created by pushing his hi hat and and the rest of it still pulling back, and it also has to do with where you know, I mean, he was the right drummer for the band, you know, uh, with Chris pulling back and. Kurt was always on top of the beat and Dave was able to to support both but define it at the same time. 